Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to EIG's 80th webinar, Fireside Chat Discussion, with our guest experts from the industry, Danny Kaplan from SMC Data and Greg Schlegel from the Supply Chain Risk Management Consortium. We look forward to an interactive discussion with each and every one of you, and we hope that your family are healthy and safe. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to join us for this interactive uh, webinar. Please do enter your comments in the chat or the Q&A throughout. There's a polling question uh, uh, in the webinar on what are you seeing in the supply chain? Please answer that. We will certainly get to that. Looks like people are already entering in right now. So thank you. Uh, this is the eighth webinar in our end-to-end -end supply chain visibility series uh, and uh, navigating the pending downturn. Uh, we uh, will be sharing best practices, probably a lot more than three best practices to help you in make more informed decisions uh, to ensure your survivability. Again, we welcome comments throughout. Uh, we believe that people process data and technology can solve the fulfillment problems improve cash flow, enhance customer experience, and increase revenue. Therefore, our discussion will demonstrate that ERP implementations do not need to be disruptive, and we look forward to this interactive webinar and your candid feedback. Again, my name is Jim DeVries, a founder president of Enhance International Group, and uh, we look forward to a good webinar. Uh, we, with, with us, we have Danny Kaplan from SMC, data that was established in 2014, and he has well over 20 years of experience in ERP software. Danny, a few words of introduction. Uh, we have supply chain software for manufacturing distribution of food, uh, mid-range mid market, and enable the distributor to buy the manufacturer and the manufacturer by distributor, and the food can be a manufacturer and distributor. Thanks, Danny. And Greg, a few words of introduction. You bet, Jim. Uh, welcome, everyone. Pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I am the founder of an organization called the Supply Chain Risk Management Consortium. We've been in business for 13 years. We'll give you a, uh, a deeper dive on uh, who we are and what we do in a minute. Uh, I've taught supply chain risk at Lehigh University for 10 years. I uh, also teach uh, ERM at Villanova here in uh, the States, in Pennsylvania. I'm an eight-year IBMer as a supply chain uh, executive consultant. Spent 35 years, maybe like many of you, as a supply chain exec for a couple Fortune 100 companies. I've taught at six different U.S. universities, taught supply chain management, and uh, was Apex president, now ASCM, back in the late 90s. So pleasure to be here. Back to you, Jim. Thank you. And again, welcome, everyone. Uh, just a little background on myself. Uh, for the past 30 years, I've been an executive master black belt, starting my first 15 years at General Electric under Jack Welch. Uh, when I left GE, I was a master black belt, then got into supply chain, CSCP, and turned into a transformation executive. I've served as a resilient uh, leader for startups to Fortune 500s. I've worked to develop global teams to identify, prioritize, and deliver self-sustainable improvements. And I've held leadership uh, positions in sales, supply chain, finance, reporting, new product development, and field operations. Our teams have developed resilient enterprise ecosystems to accelerate digitization, innovation, supply chain risk management, leadership development and strategy, and value creation. With that, uh, Danny, a few words about your company. Uh, we represent a company called VAI. It's an it's a integrated, integrated ERP software database and they has manufacturing distribution of food. And it addressed today's reality has a three, it uses the IBM Cognos Analytic. It enables you to have a 360 view of the entire company purchasing, forecasting, inventory, customer, what the customer buy, product movement, and who to buy from. The cheapest vendor is not the best vendor. 
if it has late delivery, your orders will be canceled and you end up with excess inventory. Thanks, Danny. And Greg, a few words about the consortium. You bet. Um, we're, um, we're 31 companies, uh, about 1,700 supply chain risk professionals around the globe. We operate in 23 countries. As you can see on the right-hand side, uh, the uh, logos for the companies, we stratify them into three pillars, education, consulting, and software as a service. Uh, so that's essentially who we are. And these folks bring tools, techniques, uh, methodologies, and software solutions to help us identify, assess, mitigate, and manage supply chain risks. That's what we do. On the left-hand side is what we provide. We cover them in five areas. We have two online certificate courses in supply chain risk and resiliency. One is a basic course. The other is geared towards services and public health care supply chains. You receive certificates from the supply chain consortium uh, and our education partners, Educazi. We do secondarily, we do coaching and consulting uh, folks, uh, organizations in their supply chain risk and resiliency journey. We bring solutions. These solutions are, uh, they do heavy lifting. They provide data visibility for supply chain risk and resiliency. Then we have two online assessment tools. The first supply chain management online assessment tool is what we're going to talk about a little bit today. That evaluates your supply chain process maturity and also provides a quick hit profile of your risk in your supply chain. The final one on the bottom is a prescriptive online 90-day action plan that gets into risk and that evaluates your maturity, your risk appetite, your culture, and we provide an action plan. So that's who we are, what we do. I'll turn it back to Jim. Thanks, Greg. And a little bit background on Enhanced International Group, EIG, where ex exchange uh, passionate experts to guide your transformation, to provide you self-generating and self-funding results. We have over 50 different consultants, consulting companies, and SaaS providers. And you'll see that at the end of the webinar slides, uh, our list as it's broken out into people, process, data, and technology. EIG serves as a master integrator to provide you access to the best and, and the brightest companies. We act as a Swiss army knife, we like to say. Our team is dedicated to empowering your organization's workforce by leveraging our partners' tenured leadership expertise. Our goal is to meet and exceed your expectations to provide you customized, predictable, sustainable, and repeatable 90-day action self-funding programs. In describing uh, risk management and supply chain, we love this slide because it links strate strategy, tactics, and execution. And we'll be talking about that quite, quite a bit today. And we call that STO, S-T-O. Uh, and the way that the bicycle works is you have a drive wheel, which is your strategy, which results in many rotation execution cycles, one strong rotation. Uh, results in those many execution cycles. And therefore, the drive chain represents the tactics or the tactics tactical perspective on how to keep that momentum going. Uh, strong link strategy to execution ecosystem creates that positive momentum for a company, its employees, customers, and stockholders. In summary, there are three considerations in managing a supply chain. Are you linked? Are you making uh, linked decisions between strategy and your tactical and operational time horizons? And again, we'll get into that in a few minutes. Uh, we link strategy through execution to build your cadence. And the better your cadence, the better your profitability and scalability. And a solid strategy should result in many execution cycles so that your momentum and cadence can be built. As Albert Einstein likes to say, life is like a bicycle. To keep your balance, you need to keep on moving. So we'll get moving here. And again, this is the eighth webinar in our series uh, covering uh, supply chain and ERPs. 
uh, and uh, we look forward to continuing this season, uh, uh, this season, this year with uh, additional webinars as they come up. Uh, our agenda today is how well are you positioned to navigate the, this pending downturn from a supply chain perspective, your best practices in nav navigating a pending downturn, and integrating ERPs to support critical decision making in a downturn, and integration success stories of restructuring and VAI uh, integrated ERP benefits. With that, we'll get started on how well uh, we're positioned and and what we talk a lot about is where what where are we at today from an economic perspective? Obviously, you see double-digit inflation across the globe, and the good news is that inflation in the U.S. at least is starting to subside. The rest of the world maybe not so much. Uh, however, the war in Ukraine continues to escalate, and China is looking to open its doors, and that causes more uncertainty. So we're we're seeing quite a bit of uh, changes here. So the question is, how well are you positioned in the downturn? Uh, the way that we look at it is uh, there's three perspectives that you need to take in consideration is, are you right sized? Do you have the right network design for today's environment as we resurge back into uh, hopefully increased demand coming into the second quarter? Uh, we understand that a lot of demand is down as of now is what we're hearing and what we're seeing. Uh, of course, these three capabilities create the ability to scale sustainable growth at a predictable cadence in this VUCA world. And again, VUCA is volatility caused by lockdowns, COVID lockdowns and, and uh, disruptions, uncertainty of the root cause of an event the complexity of the supply chains and our ambiguity of what is next. The rise of events are getting more transparent as our capabilities to detect and report upon these risk events become more uh, visible. Everything from COVID pandemic to the war in Ukraine, as we've discussed, the labor disputes, work stoppages, is China open, is it closed? Uh, all these things are, are causing uh, disruptions. So with that, I'll turn it over to my guests. Greg, any thoughts on this and what you're seeing? No, I think it's uh, pretty uh, appropriate, uh, kind of uh, the, the three spheres of influence, including all the threats and the risks. So uh, uh, we're, we're going to talk about right-sizing, give you some action items, call to action and action items. The network design uh, we, we'll talk a little bit about that today, and then we will also inject a couple of threads and thoughts on supply chain risk management, which we, again, think uh, is pretty important uh, in terms of uh, where industry is going in the next year. So, And Danny, your thoughts? Uh, what we are facing now is excess inventory. We went from shortage inventory of inventory to excess inventory. And partially is because companies who have legacy software don't have the right analytic to know what products are selling or what are the fast moving product and who to buy from. And this is an issue that are facing us in a very severe, severe way. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate it. And Greg, we'll get on to the economic look out, outlook of 2022. Yeah, we thought we'd share with you a couple of insights from a couple of friends of the consortium relative to the outlook going forward in 2023 and beyond. So this comes from our friends at the consortium board. They talk about slower global growth, that trend. Uh, as you can see on the top, uh, actually, they uh, put... Uh, uh, they, they gave us the actual 2020 global pandemic GDP drop of 3.3% in the top left. In the middle, they give us a forecast on a regular basis about the GDP across the globe. And then on the right-hand side on the top is potential growth, and they attempt to put together economic profiles from 2022 uh, for the next 10 years. So actually drop down to the bottom. I wanted to talk about they consider the drivers of growth on the bottom are three, labor, 
which we're going to talk about, investment, which is money, and productivity, which is supply chain. And then in the middle, uh, they share with us their global projection across the globe and in four major regions. You can take a look at it. The global is the first box. You can see uh, the first, the small box in the left is 2022 GDP for global. And then the real kicker is the second small box and take a look at that dip between 3.9 and 2.5. Then they talk about the United States. You can take a look at the dip in terms of the last year and this year. You can take a look at Europe, then China, and then India. So the net net is, it's not so much the number. What we're trying to convey to you is the difference, the drop between 2022 and going forward in 2023 and 2024. So what we look at it is, folks, it's going to be a bumpy ride for 2023. So with that, we'll turn it over to Jim. Yeah, and I, I think the, the key here is with this dip, we're going to see a lot of fluctuation and, and uh, instability in demand and supply as we move on. So as Greg calls a bumpy road, and that's gonna affect each and every one of us. Danny, do you have any additional comments on this? Um, looks like we are heading for a difficult time and we a roller coaster. Despite the fact that container prices are going down, consumer purchasing dropping and the prices are still high of the food. So I think we are facing a rocky road. And, and that leads perfectly into the next slide. As Danny said, global shipping costs are returning to pre-pandemic levels. I think that was the big news in the last week that, you know, the the cost for a container that was up in above $20,000 a container is now down to back to $1,400 a container, back to what it was uh, pre-pandemic. And inflation has subsided a bit. Uh you know, we're we're we are seeing a flattening, and from a custom uh, a consumer price index perspective, we've seen a dip in the forecast. Is that it's going to go back and return by the third quarter of this year, the consumer price index. So, so the question is, of course, will the Fed keep on raising interest rates, which is going to affect borrowing power? Can should you wait to make investments? Uh, you know, where you have to borrow money, uh, you know, those types of things are things to look at right now as we're moving into this next year. So we expect somewhat of a deflationary environment or the economists, I should say, are expecting this. This isn't Jim's thoughts. This is what the economists are saying. And so uh, if you can hold out, uh, great, but the, it's going to, you know, the question is, when will demand come back? Uh, obviously, we have access of the wrong things because we bought the wrong things uh, and new regulations. We we didn't sell as much as we expected. Therefore, we are have excess inventory and things that we can't use any longer. Uh, Greg, Danny, any ad additional thoughts on this slide? Uh, we are looking for a hard ride and it's a, the uncer uncertainty. It's a factor that people uh, affect people. The fear dominates our decisions and there is no crystal ball to say, to tell what would be a right, a right move to do. Mm -hmm. And Greg, any thoughts? Well, it's, in, it's encouraging to see uh, that uh, that gouging has uh, stopped. All right. I, I mean, I'm being blunt with the mm -hmm. with the audience. Uh, uh, and in fact, it's now uh, there's more and more ghost shipments. What does that mean? Yeah. That means they're moving companies like Maersk and so forth. They're moving their carriers with nothing on the ship to get them deployed into a better position over time to to utilize that capacity. So, yeah, it it says it all there. The gouging is over. When it comes to freight, especially uh, on the water, and it's now starting to adjust across the globe with uh, trucking as well. So, mm -hmm. 
so we're we're changing it's we're we have the, made a turn so to speak <laughs> you can easily say so the question is you know are you how well are your position you know are you right sized how is your network desi design um you know is it stretched out now now you're sourcing from other countries besides china china seeing a, a huge decrease in de uh demand so there's a huge upset in that market and the containers are finally starting to get to the right place at the right time as as greg said so greg a few words on this the triple yeah, we, Cs. yeah you bet we thought we'd share a few more uh threads and insights from again friends uh, of the consortium gartner shares a lot of data with us uh they call this the triple squeeze they did a global survey they do a lot of global surveys because they they have they can do a deep dive they have a big bench and they're pretty good on supply chain management uh, and risk research and so uh out of their uh 2020 global survey they came up with three elements First was persistent high inflation, that's what we've been talking about. 90% in their survey of CEOs said inflation will be a significant factor in their region across the globe for 2022 and beyond. We agree with that. The second element of the squeeze was scarce, expensive talent. As a supply chain and risk academician, all right, we in academia tend not. We have not been able to increase or graduate the right number of supply chain uh, analysts and supply chain students to fill the demand. There's still 100,000 uh, jobs out there at the moment. All right. So that's the good news. But 47% of the CFOs reported that it's going to be difficult to find and hire enterprise talent. That's going to continue. Third one is global supply constraints, which we've been talking about throughout all of our series um, in terms of webinars. Almost 50% of the CFOs believe that supply chain volatility and shortages will last beyond 2022. And we agree. All right. It's not just the pandemic now. Uh, there are a heck of a lot of other threats and risks out there that we need to identify. So with that, I'll turn it back to Jim. Uh, I'll turn it over to Danny. Any thoughts on this slide, Danny? Uh, it looks like the younger generation are reluctant to work. The pandemic created a new reality that people are home and the less, less stuff seen on the news that people have said, if I get fired, I will get a job immediately, which created a very instability in today's market, in today's job market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> certainly a change in uh, priorities for the young the, the the young generation. Great point. With that, I think we're going to keep moving. Uh, so the question is, what is your organization's focus? Uh, so, you know, if if you have a trusted data with an ERP, you're you know we say you're able to make the decisions that you need to make. So having that a good solid ERP and data that you can trust is is primary uh, a primary requirement for making uh, good decisions about your restructuring and how you're going to uh, respond to the market. And of course, having analytic analysis of each of your business functions on how they're performing and having that data readily available and redefining your execution goals to meet this new uh every quarter is going to be different i think we're used to managing the year and see how we're going to manage the year because of the tumultuous times you're going to have to be a little bit more flexible about changing your goals throughout the year and you need the data to help support those actions danny any additional thoughts on this slide uh not really. I cannot think off the top of my head. Of a okay. Different. And Greg, Good. any thoughts? We move on? No, I think we can just uh, move forward. Okay. So uh, what we've laid out here is, well, what do you do? You want to be laying out uh, what we call STO, horizons and planning processes, which is str strategic, tactical, and operational levels. 
And what we've listed here across the top are sell, deliver, make, source, part of the SCORE model. And we're looking at, at the strategic level, your integrated business planning process and your SNOP at the strat at strategic level and some, uh, some uh, programs under each of those, some actions that you should be taking. And then again, under the tactical area, sales and ops planning, and some of the major areas. We're not gonna read the entire slide here, but the main thing is that supply chain planning and execution systems, including organization processes, technology elements to assist companies with demand, supply and production planning will drive the profit optimization and yield management. So having a good ERP that provides you insight to all of this is critical in, in making decisions. So before we're kind of talking about it at a high level, this brings brings it through and says, do you have these types of capabilities in your company and are you managing them as, as you would like? Danny, Greg, some additional thoughts? Yes. Uh, knowing who to buy from and when to buy become a major factor. The cheapest vendor is not your best choice. If he has late delivery, your in orders will be canceled and you end up with excess symmetry, which equal cash flow issue. Second issue is you have to know what products are moving before you just order. You cannot rely on all data. So having accurate data, accurate analytic data is a very important factor now. Absolutely. And Greg, additional thoughts on this? Yeah, it's a, this is a classic supply chain uh, management uh, profile, folks, uh, with uh, the um, with the time horizons. Uh, you know, it's a it's a pretty good template. It's what supply chain end to end is all about. So, uh, uh, pretty pretty important slide in terms of uh, the view of the elements of each uh, planning horizon. So that's why we share it with you. I think it leads well into this slide for you, Greg, to lead us through. Yeah, you bet. It's uh, it it's basically the data from the last slide, folks, but in a different visual format. We we're focusing on strategic, tactical, and operational time horizons today, and so we thought we'd give you a pictorial view, left to right of that planning horizon. So same basic data, but in a pictorial uh, visual view. On the left-hand side, strategic planning. You can see the elements underneath, and then you can see the strategic time frame, anywhere from one to five years. Then there's tactical planning in the middle. You can see the elements uh, as we see them uh, under that planning horizon. And take a look at the time frame. One to 18 months, and that is normally where we we uh, maintain something we call uh, sales and operations planning. In the middle of the blue box is, quote unquote, where the miracle happens. That's master production scheduling folks, all right? And that time frame is different, anywhere from zero to 30 days. And then finally, you have the make which is what is MES? It's manufacturing execution systems. It's execution, as Jim mentioned. It's shop floor control, all right? Those are not in days, months, and years. Those are in hours and minutes. And then as you can see, once you're producing that product, if you produce finished goods, you get it out to the customer through transportation and with the help of uh, VMI. So we just wanted to give you a different pictorial view of the three or four time horizons. Jim? Thanks, Greg. Danny, any thoughts on this? Yes, knowing having a good control of your inventory arrival, it's important factor because if your, if your raw material comes late, your production will come to a standstill, which creates a brand new reality now. Thanks, Danny. And I, I guess what, from my experience, what I see very often in companies is we have execution and operations day to day, pretty much running the heartbeat of the company. And very often there is not a connection back into the tactical time frame. Uh, and building that connection in SNOP is one of the most difficult things to do. And 
not having that connection, especially in these times and not having that ability to connect those two time horizons of operational to tactical is has caused uh, m many, many issues. And I think it's it, it it's compounded issues now with the changes in demand uh, occurring in the marketplace where you're you know, you don't have enough uh, folks to manufacture, and then the next month, you don't have enough demand to fill the shop. So linking those two together is something that uh, you should probably be thinking of if you're not already working on that. And of course, uh, the network design and connecting all three time horizons. I'm not saying this is easy. This is hard. It's hard work. It's a lot of work, but it pays off when you do have them all in sync, that it, it does pay off. Uh, but you have to have the data first to be able to make the connection. With that, I'll just switch over to our supply chain management uh, ST, STO organizational focus. We have a, a scorecard. It takes about 25 minutes to fill out this assessment. And it's bit broken out into strategic, tactical, and operational levels. Uh, something that's been around with the consortium for over 20 years and hundreds of, 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 of uh, folks filling it out. It, it's a great way to uh, assess where you're at and where you want to go. Uh, the, the online assessment assesses the average and variation of, of your team if you're looking to look across your team or you can do it individually. With that, I'll turn it over to Greg, and he'll uh, show you the results of that. Greg? Yeah, you bet. Um, uh, because we're talking about strategic, tactical, and operational areas of supply chain uh, within our uh, discussion today, uh, we wanted to give you a pictorial view of what Jim just mentioned in terms of how we stratify an assessment tool around strategic, tactical, and operational uh, tenets. Uh, on the left-hand side is a picture image of our supply chain management readiness assessment tool. It's free, it's online. There is a uh, registration underneath on the bottom, but essentially it has 13 tenets, folks. You can see them around the clock, start at 12 o'clock. The three blue are strategic we feel are strategic tenets in a supply chain. The red on from three o'clock down to about uh, seven are tactical, all right? Uh, and then the green on the left-hand side of the clock are essentially operational tenets. So there's 13 tenets. The way this tool works is you answer questions. You can see your answers for every one of the tenets. That's the black line that you see superimposed on the chart. And think of it this way. The closer to the center you are with your answers, the more mature, mature your processes are. All right. That's what we're measuring. Two things. The supply chain process maturity, good, bad, or indifferent. And then essentially the second evaluation is a risk, inherent risk. So again, the farther away your answers are from the middle of the graph, the higher the inherent risk. So we measure two things, process maturity and risk. And then on the right-hand side of the chart, we actually uh, superimpose and calculate the, the company's strength associated with the blue strategic, the red tactical, and the green operational. And so again, we 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 feel we're in, right embedded. We we can support the strategic, tactical, and operational time horizons and threads that we're talking about today in our session. Jim. Thanks, Greg. And with that, I think we'll move on to the next section on the best practices in navigating the potential downturn. And uh, with that, I think, Greg, you're up right away with the end-to-end -end supply chain landscape. Yep, sir. Yep, sir. We'll just talk a little bit about uh, our view of what has happened and will happen in 2023. So we wanted to share that with you regarding what we see 
uh, and something to think about uh, going forward in our supply chain landscape. One, the increase in inflation, we've talked about that, probably will diminish demand across many sectors. The next one, many of the sectors historically, folks, have been canceling their 2x, 3x, 4x orders, which will produce an imbalance in your supply and demand. So companies who ordered 2, 3, and 4x during the pandemic are now receiving that supply. And what does that mean, folks? That means that supply is now potentially considered excess inventory. So potentially good for the consumers, bad for retailers and manufacturers. And so essentially, one of the primary impacts we see, we do a lot of work with retail manufacturers. We're probably going to see another six to 9,000 stores close over the next year and a half. So we wanted to share some of those insights with you, and I'll turn it back to Jim. Yeah, and we just wanted to share with you uh, a little bit about a, a leading indicator and what you might have heard if you watch uh, uh, financial news. They talk about the inverted yield curve and what is that. So we thought we'd provide you uh, a brief uh, introduction to that and why that is a precursor for a recession. And, you know, inverted yield curve shows the long-term interest rates are less than short-term interest rates. So, you know, you invest in you a bond or something and you expect it to increase in value over time. Here, it's inverted. And when that happens in the bond market, they say that's a leading indicator of a, a recession. Every major recession has had this occur before it. So there's a lot of noise about that. So it's something that we all should be watching uh, at, a, at a high level, just like the Baltic Dry Index. These are leading indicators that we try to introduce during the webinars that you could be looking at to kind of find out what, what the global economy looks like, especially in these tumultuous times. With that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Greg. You bet, uh, thanks, Jim. Uh, you know, we've, We've been linking maturity to financial performance, we, the consortium, for the last 13 years, all right, um, especially uh, as it relates to our situation going forward in 2023. So what we wanted to share with you, something to think about, is this is what you learn in your MBA Finance 401 class, all right? What do we mean by that? Well, does it pay to be a leader? We think yes, over in the top top left, all right? But what you learn about is your industry's quartiles, all right? Uh, and there are four. Uh, the green are the leaders, the yellow are the followers, the orange are the average, and the red are the laggards. So you learn about the industry benchmark capabilities, the financial numbers, and the quartiles. Why are we focusing on this? Because of the profile going forward uh, in terms of high inflation and diminishing demand. And so we wanted to share with you on the left, companies in the first quartile today and tomorrow will be buying other companies at a discounted rate. Companies in the second quartile will be rationalizing their product lines going forward. Companies in the third quartile will be will are being bought by companies in the first quartile on a discount. And the fourth quartile companies, they potentially have a have a potential for going out of business, folks. Not pretty, not a, uh, you know, it's rather ominous, but we, we feel it's important that you understand where you are positioned in your industry quartile, all right? So th that's why we wanted to share that. We can move on, and we have another um, uh, slide to share with you. So there's a question on 23. What are the blue numbers next to the percentile labels? What are the blue numbers uh... Mm. Oh, I think that's a, uh, I'm, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, I believe that is our numbers as, in terms of how we evaluate or our threshold levels within our supply chain management readiness assessment. Okay. Remember, we right. go from zero to 10. 
Yeah, and those are, it's an example of a benchmark. And you every industry will have a different set of numbers. We just wanted to show you, provide an example of what that spread could look like for an industry. We Agreed. don't tell you which industry it is, yep. but that uh, provides you some kind of uh, understanding of what that is. Yep. Good question. Yeah. Good question. All right. Good question. Thank you. Danny, any thoughts on this slide as far as positioning? No, not really. I have no, no, no okay. comment. With that, uh, we'll move to the next uh, thought on uh, stow alignment of best yep. practices. Yeah, we uh, again, we said we'd share some uh, insight with you. Uh, this is because we're focusing on strategic, tactical, and operational timeframes. What we thought we would do is give you a template or a roadmap, at least, to take a look at the alignment of best practices associated with uh, Danny's VAI capabilities. So I won't go through it, but on the y-axis you have strategic, tactical, operational, and execution time horizons, which we gave you those time frames. Then up on the top on the x-axis, we have three columns, industry best practices, the VAI capabilities in the middle, and then benefits and KPIs that you might want to think about if you are not utilizing those KPIs at the moment. So that's kind of our template to you. And uh, we wanted to share that with you. When you get the slides, uh, we'll answer any questions you might have going going forward after the uh, after the seminar. So with that, I think we have one more uh, basic. Andy, did set you have any inputs. comments on this? Slide? Sorry. Yep. Uh, not basically the analytic issue of the inventory become a major factor today because of the excess inventory issue. So real time information is very important knowing who, uh, who to sell to, whom to buy, what to buy, and how much to buy. Yeah, and I think one thing that I learned about the VAI solution is it is all real time, and not many ERPs have that real time capability of sending the alerts to tell you right away what's going on and that ability to create that. So I think that's a very... Not all ARPs provide that, and the ease of 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 course uh, bringing up the VAI system is is fantastic. Also, and it also is using smartphone RFID. We all hear about the warehouses where they won't, you know, the guns are broken, the four thousand dollar guns are broken, and you know I think VAI has a simple solution. So they're all about providing simple, practical solutions to implement these types of best practices. So there's a question. Do you have you seen any best practices around recession playbooks sitting on the shelf re ready to execute when the recession indicators are seen? Greg, I'll give you that one. Folks, if we had that, we would be on Wall Street. All right. Uh, I'm not being glib. I mean, that's the $64,000 question. What we can tell you is what has worked in the past, and that's what we're yeah. attempting to share with you. Uh, we, we don't have silver bullets, uh, no. but we, we've been in the business long enough and gone through several. Uh, there's a playbook. I'll say one other thing. Playbooks associated with this type of landscape are basically one-offs. It all is geared around who you are, where you are, what you do, your culture. That's why we can't really give you a $64,000 answer. Mm -hmm. There's another question here that I just saw. What does consumer level demand forecasting fit into your planning process? Where does consumer level demand forecasting fit into the planning process? Greg? Well, what we've seen, uh, the best practices are that's an exogenous or external te tendency for an index. Uh, you can get that. Uh, Jim mentioned CP, CPI. There are other indices as well. By, by industry, almost every, every industry produces exogenous external types of indexes, like, uh, like Jim mentioned, the dry bulk. I mean, those are exogenous data 
points that you can take into your scenario planning and your forecasting of demand. Uh, many organizations, like the exemplars do that all the time. They do scenario planning, they do bottom-up forecasting demand management with forecasting techniques, and then they augment it using external databases. Uh, that, uh, yeah. That's that's what we see. Great. And moving on, Greg? Yeah, you, you bet. We'll, that. Great answer. we'll finish up this thread with uh, kind of a call to action, folks. Uh, there's two of them that are that we feel are important. One is real-time supply chain visibility drives real value, especially in times like this. The other is supply chain transparency. We've seen increases productivity across the supply chain. So what do we do? What should you start thinking about? Watch your cash on the right-hand side. If you're not using cash conversion cycle as a metric of success, go find it on Wikipedia and calculate it for your own company. And you can calculate it for your suppliers and your customers. Improve your planning and become more agile. In this arena, short decision-making time, time is money. Reduce the lag time to make a decision in supply chain. Evaluate your product portfolio. We've seen many companies do this because they have to. The, look at your uh, your product portfolio using something called GMROI, gross margin return on inventory investment. You can find it on Wikipedia. Pretty simple to calculate. And you can take a look at your marginal products and perhaps get rid of them. Segment your customers. Remember, 20% of your customers represent 80% of your profits and contributions. Remember that. If you have a different profile, please send it to me via email. I'd be very interested to see that. Remember that. Not all customers are the same. And finally, accelerate your digitization and transformation. Get closer to your customer base. Stay close to your key suppliers. And if you can, start to digitize your supply chain. Back to you, Jim. And one last note on the remedy uh, that we cover uh, before, understand where your inventory is so that it is trustworthy. Make sure you're doing your PIs and uh, share that data amongst internal departments, customer suppliers, contract restructuring, leverage your fast moving products, reduce slow moving products, uh, confirm your demand and priority with your customer, Confirm availability of supply. Uh, your suppliers will be changing, and there's a lot of disruption out there, as we discussed. Update your bombs. Make sure that they're clean and updated. Make sure you're looking for alternate uh, suppliers because it's going to be a rocky road, road out there, especially uh, in the international arena. There'll be uh, companies opening and closing left and right. And uh, consider vertical integration internal increased capacity, uh, and capabilities. Uh, and a lot of onshoring is occurring today. So there's new opportunities for suppliers even right around the corner now. So, and then leverage your ERP software to minimize the shortage in access inventory. And with that, we're gonna turn, turn it over to the polling. So what are you seeing out there in supply chain? We see declining demand. Uh, high employee turnover, material price increases, uh, quality issues. Uh, so thank you for participating in the poll. I think with that, we're going to close it out with Danny, and we'll come back to the poll if we have a few minutes. So Danny, take us away. Basically, in today's reality, the, que the main question is, how, how prepared are you to meet, to fit, to meet the new reality? If you have outdated software, you have to upgrade it. But the problem, the issue is with software, people buy it, go into territories they're not aware of, and halfway through the training, they end up quitting and going back to the old software, which I had about the case study recently. The problem, the issue is, do you have to change your business to meet the software requirement, which is a square peg and a round hole? Second issue is, is it too sophisticated for your end user? It's like giving a Ferrari to a teenager, to a teenager, talking about a tragedy on the highway. 
does your software meet your requirements? Basically, before you have a demo, you should have your requirements defined and the demo should not be a slideshow. It should be very informative. And having legacy software not addressing today's technology is the issue. A lot of, cl a lot of clients are freeze when they see new technology. A good example is the client have, have, we have that came from a 30 years old software and they saw the RF gun for $4,000 and said, what the hell is that? The learning curve was too high. So we gave them a, a, a smartphone with an RFID for $400 and they're achieving 99.6 inventory. Next slide, please, Jim. That's a, that's a total overview from a 30,000 foot of this VAI software. Analytic using the IBM Cognos tells you real-time 360 view of the entire company. Mobile, clients can order on the phone, delivery to the clients, what the client rejects, they update the host meal time. Meal time. The uh, tracking, the warehouse management knows what will fit on each truck and how much the capacity. CRM, what, what to buy, when to buy, and how much to buy. And e-commerce, so it's a huge issue now. We have a client with 100 stores that has real-time information what's in each location is and what the customer buys. Next, gen, next slide, Jim. That's a total view of the entire enterprise. The supply chain, the operation, the inventory, the purchasing, the forecasting, and it's all real time, which is very, very important. Next slide, please, Jim. That's the whole overview of the company, real time. Any executive can have a 360 view of the financial, the inventory, the purchasing, the forecasting, and anything he has to see in, a, in, a, in the, a, the, using the IBM Cognos, which interface to the entire database. Next one, Jim. The software needs to be customized. You cannot take, you cannot change your business to fit the software. It's a round peg in a square hole, resulting in this, this crap, disruptions. Integration is very issue. In today's m a world, a manufacturer can buy a distributor, and a distributor can buy a manufacturer. That result to having multiple ERP software. So you need, and that the bottom line is one way has overstocked, one way has understocked. The understock is buy more. Having a single ERP software give you a total view of the entire operation, what's happening, and the user don't have to uh, uh, hopscotch for one place to another one. And the VAI information is totally real time. It has a show you what to buy, when to buy, how much to buy, and avoid getting stuck with excess inventory. This is a this is an example of a company that has uh, MRP issues. 25% of performance in today's reality, it's a very important issue. How well are you today positioned in today's reality? You have to be prepared for the new reality. That gives you real-time information, use the IBM Cognos, inventory, customer and vendor performance, and start and uh, know when to buy, how much to buy, and when to buy. It's a 360 view of the entire company in real-time mode, bar, graph chart, and you can uh, numbers, if the bank asks you for the general ledger or the financial or inventory or, or payable, give me a few minutes, download to a spreadsheet and email it. Next slide, Jim, please. That's a case study of a hundred location, uh, air condition and HAV supply. They know 
they know real time what in each location is, what the customer, must the customer buys and how much to buy to avoid excess inventory. They, the contractors on a smartphone can enter the order. In the morning, the product is ready for them. They grab it and, and go. This is a case of a ERP system. Return in one year, they achieved a million dollar return on investment. They went, it's a case study that went from a hundred million dollar to a billion dollar company in 10 years. Next one, Jim. Black River is a company that started with two owners having 300 bucks each buying a VW van in 1976. Today's a hundred million dollar. They use, a, they use a voice pick, pick up 500 tomatoes, a thousand cucumbers, because Bordus has no barcode. And that's the result. It's independent study by company achieving a million dollar benefits in 2.3 in time. This is a manufacturing $100,000 a year return on investment in one year. That's a case study of a paid supply with outdated software that came to, came to us and with a sort of $4,000 gun said, what the hell is that? We replaced it with an RFID gun for $400, I mean, with a smartphone with RFID for $400, and that's the result. 99.6 for fill rate and have no back, minimum back orders. You used to take in days to ship the orders. It's another case study of a manufacturer and that's the result. They have issue with the shipment and, the, and that's the result. Improve the shipment 60% and accuracy 995 where before they have quite a bit of issues. There's a case study for a manufacturer who bought a distributor and three ERP system having been a grand mess. They take the raw plastic to do finish good and they have problem controlling the inventory. Today they achieve 99% accuracy. 77 location went live in real time with no issue at all. The video of this company is on my website. All those videos are on my website. And those are return on investments. As you can see, a million dollar Imperial dead, Black River a million dollar, and Autumn Heart a hundred million dollar. That's the company, totally integrated software, warehouse solution, logistic, real-time information, analytic, using the IBM Cognos, which is very, the analytic is the most important thing knowing what you what to buy, when to buy, how much to buy, whom to sell, and what vendor to, what vendor, vendor to order it from. VAI does something very unusual. We provide a source code. It can be customized, it will be, will be supported by VAI. If you're 100 users, you can buy unlimited, use, unlimited users because the MNA, your 100 users can be 300 users. So you don't have to pay again. In the case of Imperial Dead, they went from 100 million to a billion dollar and they did not have to buy additional users. It's for the mid-market, manufacturing, distribution of food. Company starting with 30 million dollars. And IBM chose VAI as the top vendor for the cloud now. Thank you, Danny. Pretty compelling uh, stories there of how VAI can help in your supply chain and make it visible and make decisions for you. This is the eighth and final webinar of this series. We'll be starting a new series uh, coming in the next coming months. And uh, we look forward uh, to your participation on those. Again, EIG is a group of 50 companies providing you people, process, data, and technology solutions. And thank you for joining us. And with that, some closing words, Greg. You bet. Uh, thanks for uh, attending, folks. Uh, our comment again, with rising inflation and a distinct possibility of a downturn economy, 
We think it's more important than ever to understand your supply chain process maturity, your strategy, which is risks and competition, your tactics, which are best practices, and your operations, which are people, process, data, and technology. With that said, all the best and thanks for attending. Thank you, Greg. And Danny, some final words? Thank you for attending. We're facing some difficult times now and we have to be prepared for it. Thank you, Danny. And I'll enter it. I think we're entering a new a new stage now that we need to be, maybe it's a stage of recovery now after all of these downturn. So that's going to be the next stage that we're going through. But again, it's going to be tumultuous. And, you know, what you can do now is drive that increase in transparency with ERP and IoT and data tracking and traceability of your goods, track changing inventories by SKU, by customer, location, do your SKU stratif stratification and rationalization, truly understand which SKUs are making you money and which ones you're losing money on because it's changing and proactively have your uh, those tough discussions with your suppliers and customers on what makes you money and what does not make you money. And all in all, right now, cash is king, as Greg said. Uh, don't get caught in debt because it costs more, much more in a year from now than, than now to recover. With that, again, thank you for joining us this week, and we look forward and uh, speaking with you soon.